good morning. Welcome to uh, worship today. Uh, this is Pentecost Sunday. Uh, Pentecost is the birthday of the church. That's what I'll be talking about uh, this morning. Uh, we pray together divine service setting one. That's on page 151. Uh, so go ahead and mark that uh, page in your hymnal. Sing our first hymn, 913 to 913. Let us then confess our sins unto God our Father. 
most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you in our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your presence and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. And Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a cold and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now speak to, together the intro. It's printed on the back of our bulletin. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of the faithful, and kindle in them the fire of your love. Hallelujah. O oh Lord, how manifold are your works! In your wisdom, have you made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. These all look to you to give them their food in due season. When you give it to them, they gather it up. When you open your hands, they are filled with good things. When you send forth your spirit, they are created. And you renew the face of the ground. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of the faithful, and kindle in them the fire of your love. Hallelujah. We continue on page 152 as we say, Lord, have mercy. Follow that by singing, This is the Feast. In, in peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Comfort and defend us, gracious Lord.
God, on this day, you once taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending them the light of your Holy Spirit. Grant us in our day by the same Spirit to have a right understanding in all things and evermore rejoice in your holy consolation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Old Testament lesson pointed for this day at Pentecost from the book of Numbers, chapter 11. Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord. And he gathered 70 men of the elders of the people and placed them around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him and took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the 70 elders. And as soon as the spirit rested on them, they prophesied. But they did not continue doing it. Now, two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad and the other named Medad, and the Spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they did not, they had not gone out to the tent. So they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the assistant of Moses from his youth, said, My Lord Moses, stop them. But Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, that the Lord would put his spirit on them, Moses and the elders of Israel returned to the camp. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading is from the book of Acts, chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all gathered together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind. And it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the spirits gave them utterance. Now, there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men, from every nation under heaven. And at this sound, the multitude came together. And they were bewildered because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all of these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language. Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, the visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians. We hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others mocking said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and give ear to my words. For these men are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last 
days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants in those days, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We turn in our hymnal to page 156, page 156. We stand as we sing our Alleluia verse.
seated. Let us pray. Gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock, and our Redeemer. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God the Father, and from the Lord and the Savior, Jesus. Amen. Well, dear friends in Christ, it was my birthday this past Tuesday, May the 23rd. I turned 37. Now, I have had several memorable birthdays in my lifetime. My earliest I can remember, you see, my, my great-grandfather, his name was Henry, his birthday was May the 24th. So my earliest birthdays, we always celebrated the birthdays together. I remember he always let me have a cup of coffee while we ate our cake together. <laughs> then there was the year that we had a blizzard on my birthday. No man asked us. Mind you, this was in South Dakota at the end of May. And that blizzard ruined my birthday. So I moved away from there. <laughs> And then it was my 16th birthday. My friends threw a surprise birthday party for me. See, one of my friends, their family owned the Super 8 Motel. And so, you know, we got a room and uh, they had it all decorated up. And it was, it was a great time. But I have found, however, and you may experience this too, that the older you get, the less exciting birthdays become. But my birthday this year was special in its own way. Uh, for one thing, I, I got to spend a good amount of time riding with Jesse Hagen because me and her went and visited Arthur that day up in Warrensburg. I thoroughly enjoyed that. But the rest of my birthday was much like every other day. Now, I'm not complaining. That's just fine. And I wouldn't have it any other way. So my boys had a baseball game that night in Lincoln. So we had a very, very rushed dinner. We had the craziness of trying to find and scour through our house all the baseball stuff to make sure they had it on and together to get them to Lincoln in time. But my family did sing happy birthday to me, and I did receive some gifts. It really was a great birthday. But again, as we grow older, birthdays become more and more just like every other day. Now, as I mentioned, right at the beginning of the service, the Pentecost is the birthday of the Christian church. And I'll explain about that more in a moment, but we need to remind ourselves before we get to Pentecost where we have been in the scriptures up to this point in Acts chapter 2. And we've gone through all of this in the church here. This started back in November with Advent as we prepared ourselves for the coming king born on Christmas Day, the birth of Jesus. We then during Epiphany followed Jesus as he taught the crowds his miraculous teaching, as he did miracles, healed people, rose people from the dead. And then we got to Lent and Holy Week where we walked with Jesus to the cross where we saw his suffering and death where we mourned as he was laid in the tomb. And then just 50 days ago, Easter Sunday, we celebrated Jesus joyfully rising from the dead, breaking death and the defeating the devil. And then, after he rose from the dead, Jesus appeared to his disciples for 40 days to show the mighty work of God. And finally, 
Jesus ascended into heaven. Now, I love the biblical account of the ascension of Jesus. Because what you have is you got his disciples standing around. And Jesus lifts up his hands and blesses them. And then all of a sudden, Jesus begins to rise up into the clouds, and his disciples are left staring up into the empty sky with their mouths open, kind of like this, <laughs> wondering, what the heck just happened? Not really understanding. To the point when they were standing like this for so long, the two angels had to come down and tell them and say, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up into heaven? This Jesus who has taken up from you into heaven will come again in the same way you saw him go up into heaven. It's like the angels came down and said, quit standing around and do something. But what were they to do? The answer is Pentecost. So before Jesus ascended into heaven, he said this to his disciples. Jesus said this, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So Jesus did, in fact, Leave the disciples with something to hold on to. He didn't leave them wondering. They shouldn't have been standing up in heaven like this. Because they knew what Jesus had them to do. He gave them a charge. And then he gave them help to do it. Proclaim the mighty works of God throughout the world. And the day of Pentecost is the fulfillment of what Jesus says to the disciples right before he ascended into heaven. So we get to the day of Pentecost. This, we're now in the book of Acts, chapter 2. And it says this, when the day of Pentecost arrived... The disciples were all together in one place, and suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each of them, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. This is the birth of the Christian church on earth. So the church has its job from Jesus, that is, being witnesses to the whole world of what God has done through Jesus, and on Pentecost, then, the Lord gives the church the tools it needs to get that job done. The church is given the Holy Spirit. That is God's very own presence within the church, guiding the church, calling the church to faithfulness, Helping every Christian to believe and to be witnesses in the world. Now, I've been your pastor now for six years. I think every Pentecost Sunday I've quoted Luther's small catechism, the explanation of the third article of the Creed, every Pentecost Sunday as we celebrate the, the Holy Spirit coming to the church because it is so beautiful and it so explains the the wonderful gift of the Holy Spirit. Where Luther says, this is what you get on Pentecost. This Holy Spirit. Who said, and Luther says, when we confess the third article of the creed, we, we confess, 
I believe that I cannot by my own reason or strength believe in Jesus Christ my Lord or come to him. But, my favorite word, not just something to sit on, but the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified, and keeps me in the one true faith. And in the same way, he calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. And in this Christian church, he daily and richly forgives all my sins and the sins of all believers. And on the last day, he will raise me and all the dead and give eternal life to me and all believers in Christ. <laughs> this is most certainly true, as we know the Catechism. But more than receiving the Holy Spirit, the Church, on its birthday, also received the tongues of fire. Now, last Sunday my kids went to Sunday School at St. John's, kind of flip-flop, you know, and, uh, and their craft at St. John's, they, they made a red headband on the paper. And it had a, a fire on it. But that was one of the best crafts that they could have had for Pentecost Sunday, even though it was last Sunday. Oh, but that's what it was. The tongues of fire. Because Pentecost is, if you think about it, the undoing of the Tower of Babel. Y'all remember the Tower of Babel? God's people thought, well, we're something. We know a whole bunch of stuff. Let's build a tower up to heaven and reach God ourselves. And God laughs. What does he do? He confuses the language of all of them. Just imagine you're, you're hammering a stone and your friend Bob is next to you. You're hammering a stone. You go over to Bob and say, Bob, what's going on? He doesn't understand what you're saying because now you speak different languages. That's the Tower of Babel. And Pentecost is the undoing of that because the church receives every language to proclaim the wondrous works of God so that all people throughout the world could hear and understand and receive the Holy Spirit. So on the birthday of the church, that first Pentecost, not only did the, did the disciples of the church receive their charge from Jesus, go and be witnesses of the mighty works of God, but they were also given the tools needed to do just that. The Holy Spirit and the tongues of all languages. Now, the church has had almost 2,000 birthdays since that first Pentecost. And they all can't be like that first Pentecost, can they? <laughs> And just like our birthdays in our lives, we know that they get less and less exciting with each passing year. Sometimes we find that same situation with the birthday of the church. Because you see, the world and the culture around us likes to really point out that fact. The church is old. It's outdated. No relevance anymore. Our world and culture looks at the church and sees our outdated rituals. It sees the teachings that we teach as no longer applicable to our world today. The world looks at our church services on Sunday morning and 
laughs as we give our tithe, laughs as we speak prayers to a being we don't see, and laughs and mocks as we claim to eat the body and drink the blood of a murdered criminal from 2,000 years ago. To the world, the church looks so old that we should probably just put it in a nursing home and move on. But this Pentecost Sunday of 2023, this birthday of the church, what is the church to do in the face of such <coughs> indifference? Well, the answer, do the job Jesus left us to do. Proclaim the wondrous works of God. What God has done for us sinners in the free forgiveness of our sins in the death and resurrection of Jesus. But we don't have to do it like they did on that very first Pentecost. So then we know that we can't have that very first Pentecost every year. <laughs> Although, it makes me wonder... How many people we have in church next Sunday if the Holy Spirit crashed through our ceiling as a dove and then we all had tons of fire on our heads and we all prophesied the wondrous works of God and that got in the papers? <laughs> We'd probably be filled next Sunday. But it can't be like that. And we know that. And that's okay. And just like our own birthdays gets a little more boring year after year, that does not mean that our birthday is any less important than when we were first born. And so the church celebrates her birthday much like I celebrated mine this past week. Sure, it was quiet. Sure, it was like any other day. But while I was celebrating my 37th trip around the sun, I was doing my job. Talking with Jesse and visiting Arthur. I was being a husband and father, making dinner, doing my best to get the kids ready for their ball game, <coughs> even if they were wearing one blue and one white sock. Going to their game, watching their game, because those things are important. And they are just what I do, even if it's my birthday. And so it goes with the church. Her birthday may not be as exciting as that first one, with tongues of fire and with the Holy Spirit. But nonetheless, the church still does what Jesus would have her do. The church proclaims the wondrous works of God to all people who need to hear it. Amen. And now may the peace of God which surpasses all human understanding guard our hearts and minds in the one true faith, even into life everlasting. Amen. Now take a moment to worship our God with our tithes and offerings.
moving each petition by saying, Lord, in your mercy, the congregation responds by saying, hear our prayer. Please stand as we pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, when you filled the disciples with the Holy Spirit, 3,000 souls were called, gathered, enlightened, and sanctified. Likewise, fill our congregation, our synod, and our whole Christian church on earth with the Holy Spirit. Renew us, that the sacraments may be administered faithfully, and that many more would be called by the gospel. Enlightened with your gifts, sanctified and kept in the truth faith. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty God, you delivered your word through Moses and the prophets and fulfilled your word in Christ. He was planted into death for our sins and raised for our justification. And in him shall all the nations of the earth be united. Give us pastors who will preach this truth faithfully and church workers and teachers who are devoted to your service. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. O light of the world, you have sent the Holy Spirit to your church as the comfort. Soothe the wounds of your people according to your will. Bring restoration to broken families. Heal the sick. Uplift the depressed. Provide for the poor. Uphold the forgotten and answer the prayers of all who cry to you for help and aid. We uplift to your care, especially Tom, Arthur, Jesse, Cecil, Gail, Marilyn, Florine, Robert, Hayden, Ethley, Marvin, Pat, Gabe, Jennifer, Carolyn, Margaret, Russell, Karen, Bill, Rebecca, Marilou, Jamie, Cody, and the lady. And all those we now name silently upon our hearts. Heal them according to your will. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty Father, with your Son, Jesus Christ, send your Holy Spirit into our hearts through your word to rule and govern us according to your will. Comfort us in every temptation and misfortune, and defend us against every error, that we may continue steadfast in the faith increase in love and good works, and, trusting firmly in your grace for us by his death, obtain eternal salvation. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We continue with the service of the sacrament as it begins on page 160, page 160. The Lord be with you.
teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the same night when he was betrayed, took bread. And after he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same manner, after supper, he also took the cup. And after he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do, as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. And the peace of the Lord be with you always.
Our service continues on page 164, page 164, we sing, Thank the Lord. Please sing.